so far. We have Paul Clark, <laughs> president and Storm Co- of Storm Consultants, as well as a GM of Renegade Roofing, and Ken Siders, who is a senior forensic analyst with environmental testing and assessment. Um, did you guys uh, get to listen to the intro? <laughs> it's like, what kind of an applause is that? <laughs> Hey, you didn't um, get any screams. You're good. Oh, that's good too. So, what? did you hear all the stuff from uh, Fifth Element? Because, like I said, I, it, there's a lot of Ruby Rod stuff in there, but then, like, I got some of Gary Oldman's thing in there, and then um, just the Radio Cosmos, you know, that came on right before the Blue Lady scene. So, I know that movie entirely way too well. <laughs> but, um, yeah. One of your favorite ones? Uh, you know, it you is. It's it? like, a, I, it's. It, I like it because of the sounds boom. that are in okay. it. Cha boom. Yeah. <laughs> Bada boom. <laughs> um, because somebody, I've been in radio for so I long. I was going to say, she's you, a radio girl. She's yeah. like, I like the sounds. Um, <laughs> it, and you can like turn it up, like certain parts of it, uh, if you have a really good sound system. And uh, we've talked about the Blue mm-hmm. Lady scene before, but that's like one of my favorites when you just, you know, turn the sound system on full blast and it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. Um but when in, okay, so we're talking about <laughs> storm season, mm-hmm. uh, being prepared, all of that other good stuff. And where did we leave off? You have to remind oh me. Oh gosh, now. yeah, I know, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Are you seriously looking at the ADHD girl for a memory? I mean, I can tell you what happened well, in '77. No, yeah. uh, actually, what we're talking about is putting a group together mm-hmm. um, because we're talking about you know um, networking spheres and and. And um, Paul was talking about um, uh, storm consulting, and and I think that what we've done so far is set you up perfectly on why <laughs> it's important to have a company like Storm Consulting. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then uh, cl- uh, people doing their due diligence, mm-hmm. homeowners. Oh, that's right. Yay, um, we got there. Okay, thank and you. Reading the uh, the contracts. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> because I'm sorry, those contracts are ridiculous. So if you've got some advice on reading a contract before you sign it, then that would be phenomenal because they are 35 pages long. Or what specific parts to pay attention to, like just key stuff, I guess. Yeah. So I, I guess you're asking me because you're staring at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you said you're the one who said you got to do your due diligence, so shame on you. But you know Stop. what? Like I said, if you got your roof leaking and you want to get it fixed and somebody's got a contract in front of you and said they're going to fix it most people are going to sign it and said, say, oh, you know what? I know there's an active leak in my house, but l- give me two weeks to read this document and look up everything mm-hmm. that I don't understand. Or give it to an attorney. To tell, get them to tell you. you took the words right out of my oh, mouth. Oh, there we go. <laughs> because uh, there, there's going to be language in there that people just don't normally use in their vernacular. So they won't even know what it means. Mm-hmm. And so although I always highly advise people to read every word of everything that you're going to sign, it doesn't mean that you're going to understand what the disclaimers mean. And so it's always a good idea to have your contract reviewed by an attorney. Now, I'm not saying that every single thing, if you buy a car, you're not going to bring your attorney with you. Mm-hmm. And, and probably if you're having your roof repaired, you don't need your attorney. But if you're going to have a major project at your home with a 28-page contract, you need to read it and you need to have someone who understands it help you. But uh, I'll go back to something that Paul and I talked about on the way here, is that people don't do business with companies. People do business with people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Mm -hmm. so the first thing I would say is, if you don't trust the person that's giving you the contract, you shouldn't sign it. It it doesn't matter what's on paper, Mm -hmm. because things that start poorly generally end poorly. What do you think would be warning signs that you wouldn't trust a certain company? Uh, A, they're only there for the money. Um, if you, we've all been in sales and we understand that you never want to buy someone for s- something from someone who's eager just to get the sale done and get you up. Things that people say to me like, oh, don't worry about that. That's a red flag for me. That's when a, you ask questions and yeah. they're like, they're like, oh, no, no, that's not. Don't worry about that. We'll mm-hmm. take care of that. That's a huge mm-hmm. red flag for me. Also, or, you're, you're going to want to know if they have their license, yep. if they're insurance and if they're qualified. That's a big thing, and that's difficult with uh, out-of-town contractors. I said nice things about them earlier, and I mean it, but the better deal is to get a local mm-hmm. and to get a building consultant that works with a local. That's the better deal. Why? That's one of the – why is – oh, mm-hmm. you said right? No, I said why. Why was it better to be local? I well, have an idea about it. Well, there are several reasons. First of all, the person is going to live here. Mm-hmm. So – People that are going to work in their own backyard. In their probably community. In their yeah, community. they don't want anybody to trash talk them. That's right. And then there's the other part, which is 
if you, especially in roofing and other things, if you have an issue later, you want someone who's going to be here that can take care of it. For instance, Renegade, they're a local company. They work here. Now, everyone has a bandwidth. You know, they, you can't do a million roofs. Right. And you, no matter how big you are, you're not going to do that as one company. Mm -hmm. But if you could establish a relationship with someone like that, even up front, and, and have an idea. When, when we talk about our coalition, if you will, our loose coalition, that we work together, we plan for the storm. We're in storm planning mode right now. Uh, yeah. And because we know there are going to be storms, we know there are going to be issues. And uh, I, I know a gentleman who says, I don't shake hands while standing on the rubble. I always took that as a good lesson. That's not a good time to make a decision. Mm -hmm. You need to know what you're going to do. Because you're feeling desperate. Absolutely. Yeah. So you know, what's the old story? Don't go to the grocery store hungry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trust me. I'm more knowledge <laughs> than That's not just a saying. Yeah. That's, that's for real that's life facts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> life lessons. And, right. And for me, I'm, another thing is, you know, you get a consultant that goes through or a, co a company that's going to educate you like ours, um, Renegade, ETA, uh, you know, if you're going to get educated before you sign with them, be educated so you can make an educated decision. Just don't sign with everybody because, you know, Tom down the street mm -hmm. told you to sign with mm -hmm. this person. Mm -hmm. You know, Ken touched on it earlier. You need to vet them. Well, how do you vet them? Okay, are they with the BBB? You can look into the, you know, the Department of Financial Services to see about their licensing. Are, are there any marks on it? Um, you know, you can go to Google nowadays, and then I tell everybody this, if it, and the Google reviews, if it's not over four, then you probably don't want to go with that person. I agree. And, mm -hmm. and, and look at them. Um, but those are a lot of ways to vet people. But nowadays, the way things are changing, you don't know if you can trust the contractor. You don't know if you can trust the attorney. You don't know if you can trust the public adjuster. You've got to do your homework. Right. And, and that's why the consulting things are starting to come, because we have partners, and we educate and nowadays, with the new law changes, I think the consulting thing is going to be the biggest thing to hire because that consultant can help you with your contract. And one of the biggest things Storm Consultants has and our coalition has is we have attorneys mm -hmm. that we partner with. But you've also already vetted them. Exactly. We've worked with them. We've vetted them. Mm -hmm. We've asked the questions. One of the biggest things on this storm, because the biggest complaint from Irma was the attorneys took so many fees and delayed my, my claim and I didn't get my roof done for five years. Mm. Well, we don't want to work with an attorney right. that's doing that because they're taking advantage of the situation mm -hmm. and it's making the project take longer to do. We want an attorney and we've talked to our attorneys that we've partnered with and said, hey, we don't want that. If that's what you're going to do, we're not a good fit. And mm -hmm. if I find out that you're doing that, then we're not going to work with you anymore. Mm -hmm. um, well, hold on. That, that, that music means that we are going to go to break, but I'm interested in finding out what other qualifications are to, or, in order to be part of your coalition. So mm -hmm. everybody stay tuned and we'll be back with more Bad Radio. There might be a secret handshake. We don't know. Stay tuned to find out. This is Bad Radio. Go to BAADradio.com for networking and more information. We'll be right back. At some point, is there a secret handshake? Like to give some advice to homeowners, specifically residential homeowners, for pre-storm ideas that they yeah. should do. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. We have three more 10 minutes, so we have 30 mm -hmm. more minutes total. Yeah. So um, I want to talk about how you vet the that, um, yeah. and then we'll talk about that after that. So I think that's great. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah, one, one of the things, I don't know if we're going to touch base on, uh, one of the things I would bring up in that segment is talking about, especially with Hurricane Ann victims, if you've had your work done, you need to take pictures of all that work with a time stamp date, mm -hmm. uh, with a camera that has a time state stamp and a date on it showing that you've done your work. Because if we get another hurricane that hits that same area, the insurance companies say, well, we already paid you. You didn't do the work. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, that, so that I want to talk about something like that. That's exactly one of the things I was going to bring up. Because okay. well, we've both seen this yeah. happen. We've seen, well, I'm on a major commercial project right now that has obvious storm damage from this storm. And they're trying to, to claim that it was from previous storms. Irma. and Yeah, from Irma. And so we've done this long enough. We can tell the difference between new and old damage. Oh, definitely. But... You know, the bottom line is eventually somebody that's at the desk adjuster's seat is going to have to get permission, and they, they never see it. You know, they may see a picture. They're going to have to get permission to release that check and without their higher-ups getting on to them because it's just a game. The whole mm -hmm. thing's a game. Mm -hmm. And so you get these uh, – well, let's talk about field adjusters. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> so I, I don't want to say this on, on line, but um, I was in South Carolina – 
for a project, and we had a field inter- so intro. So this is live, so right? Yeah, on the social media, it's live. Bye. Right, so make sure you know that. Just so you know, if you're going to badmouth somebody, we <laughs> just <laughs> you it won't be part of the broadcast, but we are on live on the platform. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine. So uh, the, the insurance field adjuster came out and began to talk about what was going to happen, what wasn't going to happen, and had obviously no experience, literally. Mm-hmm. So the remediation company that was on that project that I was working on also, the gentleman, one of the owners, went off the island back into town the next day drove through a McDonald's to get coffee, and guess who served him coffee? The same guy? <laughs> well, the same guy in a McDonald's outfit. He was probably no more than 20. He worked there full time, so what did my friend do? Just took the picture, mm-hmm. and then sent it to the insurance company and said, I don't think we have the right adjuster here. <laughs> oh, my God. Nice work. Uh, nice yeah. work. You know, a lot of people don't understand, too, that when you meet with an insurance adjuster, anything they say or do can be held. So, like, I had one come and say... Well, we're going to go back on the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're live. We're so excited. You guys yeah. are telling good stuff. Yeah. You guys ready? Yes. Let's do this. Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore. Because a couple... Uh, that's it. I'm doing it again. You don't cough in the beginning of the show. <laughs> okay. Sorry, okay. sorry. Stand by. Take the... <laughs> Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. Welcome back, and this portion of Bad Radio is brought to you by Rachel Roach Realty, a Coldwell Banker Realtor. With the sea of realtors out there, choose one that thinks of you first and not their commission. 407-252-4566. And we are back with Paul Clark, president of Storm Consultants, as well as the GM of Renegade Roofing, and Ken Siders, senior forensic analyst with environmental testing and assessment. Um, all right. I want to continue on with what we were talking about. And it was talking about vetting your con- I mean, your vendors. So mm-hmm. that's, the way I, that's the way my mind says it, is that a consultant is like the broker. But the broker is the one who has all the knowledge. So... You're, sure. you're the consultant, the broker, so um, damage happens. A storm comes through. A homeowner calls you. You go out. You're going to assess that. But before that, you are going to you have your list of people right. that you're going to call on. So how do you go about picking the, the companies that you are going to refer business to or so basically hire? Right. So what we've done is been doing this work for 25 years and then collectively – you know, our team of us of over 100 years. So right. we all have met people. We've all have worked with people in previous storms. Um, you know, we've used our same attorneys from previous storms as well. And then sometimes you, you've got to add new ones. Mm-hmm. And some of the other ones have to go. Drop off. Um, yep. Drop off just because of things that you see how people work. Mm-hmm. And we want to have the same team mentality where you're doing the right thing. You're taking care of the client. And the job is being done properly. And when you hand off that client to the next person, they should expect the same customer service and the same service. I agree. Um, I think that that's in- incredibly important. So what we do is, you know, the attorneys we have, um, we have a new, a couple new ones, and then we use the same one that we use from Irma. Um, and that's how we vetted the one that we had. We had a drop off to uh, because we didn't like the way the two were working before. You know, we had a conversation and they'll go. So we have... You know, we always have a list of three, uh, so the client has, the, you know, a choice. A choice, yeah. Because yeah. every personality is not going to fit. Exactly. <laughs> every every job, you know, we have, we do commercial, we do HOAs, communities, mm-hmm. property managers, CAMs, churches, uh, commercial realtors, but we also do a lot of residential. Mm. So we want to put the correct uh, mm-hmm. client to the correct, correct attorney. Mm-hmm. Same thing with public adjusters, same things with... A remediation company partners, fencing company partners, they have to have the ability to do the work for those people as well and do it correctly. So when you go through that vetting process, obviously you have the, we we probably have two or three meetings with these companies. We do our due diligence by looking at their Google reviews. We look at their business history, you know, on, on the, um, with the attorneys, you can go to the bar association to see if they have any marks. Right. So mm-hmm. you, you want to do that and you want to ask around. You want to see who has those good, uh, good reviews and has a good name behind their back because as we know there's some out there that don't in every category do you put a cap on their fees i mean do you say like i mean because you 
so, like you said before, some people are overcharging. Do you right. take that into consideration too? So most of the time that we're charging on an insurance claim, it's all through Xactimate and on okay. through the insurance claim. So it, it's pretty well regulated. Now, if I go in and someone complaining about uh, a customer, a contractor charging too much, or they don't think the attorney's doing something, you know, we'll ask the you know our partner and say, hey, let me, see, can I see your estimate? And as a consultant. If I'm doing this under storm consultants, I'm in charge because I'm going to go and get everybody and place them. But at the at the end of the day, the customer signed with me to make sure that they were taken mm-hmm. care of, so they're going to have to answer to me. That's part of the whole thing. You vet the, the, the um, right. estimate. You want to make sure that it was done properly. You know, the other thing is, you know, with doing that, you're protecting the their that customer's interest. You're protecting all of us. So I don't want to do that all the time. So that happens very few and far between mm-hmm. um, because we have a relationship with our partners that know the, you know what their responsibility is and know what the expectation is. Well, if you think about, too, because this is the way it works with the media agency is that you save uh, the client a tremendous amount of time as well because for, uh, if, a, if a company wants to advertise, they, they go to iHeart, they get a rep. They go over to Fox Television, they get a rep. They go over to some digital company, they get a rep. And next thing you know, they've got seven different reps, seven different conversations, you know, and that's all going on. But when they use a media agency, they have that one conversation that our job is to go out there and to have those conversations and mm-hmm. negotiate on their behalf and get them the best right. deal. Right. And then we also get to work on economies of scale. Do you guys have that as well? So, so you kind of hit the nail on the head with what Storm Consultants is. Mm-hmm. Um, we do all that for that client under the insurance claim. Uh, you know, we're going to help them get the best um, settlement that they can. Mm-hmm. Now, again, if we have to push them to an attorney, we will. But that's exactly what Storm Consultants does. You know, if you're if you're a commercial building or let's just say a cam or a property manager, they have multiple properties. They don't have time to, you know, look at a hundred clients' right. claims. <laughs> Think about that. And then, nor do they have time to call five different contractors. Right. So that's what we do as partners. We call each other, and we already have the partner. So right. I take that on. That's part of the service. So when they have a claim, we look at the claim. Yep, we can help you. We'll do an. Ass- what we do is really an assessment. Mm-hmm. You know, I ask for the paperwork. I'll take the paperwork that the, the paperwork insur- you mean like their their, their um, estimate from the insurance pol- company. Okay, okay. And we can take the policy and go through all that. Now, if they haven't had any of that done and it's a brand new storm and and it's day two and we're there and they need tarping, we're gonna go there. We're gonna do the tarping. We're gonna talk about everything we can do and have them if they want to sign with us. We'll educate the services we can do because mm-hmm. now I'm doing that as the GC project manager consultant. Mm-hmm. I can and take that's on taking that all. everything under that umbrella. I think that that's brilliant as opposed to piecemealing it together. But the first the first thing you're going to do is secure that that um, that building, whatever it is, so exactly. that no further damage occurs. And then you'll also be able to assess if there's any damage for the homeowners or the tenants or whatever it is, correct? Yep. And one of the things you just said that why Ken and I partner is Ken really can't do anything until the building's, the roof is uh, dried in. You know, we got to make sure. The roof is what? Dried? So make sure the roof's dried in. So like shrink wrapped or tarp. Okay, so, so secure. So it's not leaking. Secure. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So then he can go and do his testing. But if the roof's still leaking, his testing's not going to be, Mm-mm. you know, it's not going to matter. Mm-hmm. So that is one of the biggest things is you want to make sure as a partner that we understand each other and what the client needs. You'll get, again, you'll get, this is what I'm passionate about. You'll get companies that will come and they're national companies, but they're, you know, they're, um, hiring people that they shouldn't be hiring to have no education in this business, not wearing the correct PPE, doing the wrong things, the trash and bag companies, and they don't take care of the customer. The roof's still leaking, but they're in there doing, ripping out everything. I know. Mm-hmm. I I get surprised sometimes, and I still, to this day, will get fooled. Like, I hear an ad all the time for, I'm not going to say the name, but it's a it's a piping company. It's a repiping company. And they they advertise so much in this market, and I wanted to get I wanted to get my my house checked out, and so I call the number, and turns out it's it's a company out of California, hmm. and and the people that would be coming looking at my place is just a local business that they contracted out. I could call that local business myself yeah. Right. Yeah. and 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 do that, and I was so annoyed, <laughs> and because I, I was like this, I'm I got fooled, mm-hmm. yeah I got fooled yeah. again, <laughs> um, and I'm like okay lesson learned. 
I want to hire local, but yes, that's yeah. just it is. They they brand themselves as somebody that's local to here, but the truth is, is they're just contracting people out. Exactly, and and you want this business is relationships. You should want to have relationships. So if another storm hits, you know who to call again. And if you know we we have some national partners. So what we do is you were asking earlier about preparation. What we do to prepare for the storm. You know, we're already on those calls. I'm calling other companies that I have personal relationships that I worked with before that if Louisiana gets hit, we have people that can go there from these other companies and take care of our customers. Uh, Texas, you know, same thing. Is Renegade Carolines. roofing in other states besides Florida? No, Renegade is just that we have two offices in Florida. We have one on the East Coast and one on the West Coast. So Fort Myers on the West and uh, Deerfield on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're a state licensed uh, general contractor and roofer. So we can go anywhere in the state and work. Mm-hmm. Um, all we need to do is go register in that county. Mm-hmm. Um, but primarily we're southwest and southeast Florida right now. But we have partners that when a storm hits in other places that my crews here aren't leaving. But right. we have crews from other companies gotcha. that will go and help those national customers. That are local right. that you can trust. That, yep, yeah. that are local that you can okay. trust. And some of them are in the top 20 of the biggest commercial roofing companies in the country. Right. Well, actually, you know, when we get back to, I want to talk about um, what homeowners need to do to be prepared. You guys are talking about what you are you do to be prepared. Let's talk about what homeowners need to do to get ready for a storm season. So stay tuned for some more Bad Radio. Sounds good. We'll be right here. News Radio WFLA Orlando every Sunday, 11 until 1 p.m. Bad Radio. Was that our sixth segment? Yes, the- it was. You have two left. All righty. Why, you need to go somewhere? No, I'm just, I got to turn off she's, and turn she's, on. Yeah, she's making sure her camera's she's messing on. with her, you know that. <laughs> it's like messing with Sasquatch. Have, yeah, you, sometimes you got to do it. Your gas lighter, gas lighter. <laughs> News Radio WFLA Orlando every Sunday, 11 until 1 p.m. Bad radio. <laughs> She's got the best radio voice. Yes. Ah. Stop it, kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing that I still to this day, I just I can't stand the sound of my, sound of my voice. I was always uh, like on the sales side of stuff, so it was really hard for me to step outside of my comfort zone. To do the radio show, and honestly, that's why it kind of took it like really slow at first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that. Uh-huh. I've done these things, and I'm like, I sound like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you sound comfortable to me. I am yeah. now. I am very comfortable, and I really enjoy it. So you have a good flow. I like it when it's a topic that is something that I. I I've learned so much about so many different businesses doing this. You know, because we have everybody in from like. Uh, coaches, health, like and wellness. health and wellness, mm-hmm. to um, uh, irrigation companies, to I, you know, IT companies, and limo drivers. <laughs> <laughs> it's so CBD and weed people. Yeah. Hey, uh, quick sell promotion off the air at the moment, but uh, I'm also during the roundtable. I have two hurricane segments. They are about your electricity and planning ahead. Apparently, one in three people have no plan. When it comes to a hurricane and losing their electricity, which is obviously a sidebar to the house itself, right, right. but still hurricane preparedness, um, if it's a sidebar for you, would be great. You okay. know, a little bit of that. Because there's one thing when your house screws, but you had the flooding. Uh, there were, what, seven, ten days where we had absolutely no power. Mm-hmm. Old people were molding away. It was, mm-hmm. it was sad. So anyway, but your topic is great. <laughs> but that was a nice sidebar, if you don't mind, just something like that about being prepared to, like you said. Stand by, I'm done talking. <laughs> Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. And we are back, and this portion of Bad Radio is brought to you by Liberty Property Inspections. Your home is one of your most important investments, so don't trust it to just anyone. LibertyPropertyInspections.net, helping you protect your investment. And we are talking with Paul Clark, president of Storm Consultants, as well as the GM of Renegade Roofing, and Ken Sider, senior forensic analyst with environmental testing and assessment. And before break, we were talking about things that they're doing in their fields to get ready for hurricane season. But now let's talk about what homeowners can do to get ready. And there is everything from your irrigation system to your roof to your plumbing. I mean, what, where, where, where do people start? <laughs> Well, from a practical uh, standpoint, let's talk about uh, the end game. The end game is after the storm. Mm -hmm. 
So the question that we need to ask ourselves is, what do I wish I had done before the storm? Right. That you have to try to think ahead of time. You have to think ahead. So in regards to insurance, I have a saying that I tell all of our people, pictures are free. Everyone that I know has a cell phone. Walk through your home or your business establishment or whatever it may be and take hundreds of pictures. But you, but you said time stamp it. Well, yes. And, and like what's, to uh, be like fair, a smartphone? all smartphones oh, yeah. have time stamps. They just aren't on the picture itself. They're in the metadata. Right. But you can pull that data right. and right. print it. Like, I know I can do that. When I have a picture, I just, like, hit it up, and mm-hmm. it will tell me when I took it. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. exactly yeah. right. I don't know how to turn that feature, the time stamp feature on. <laughs> so thank uh, you. <laughs> and the big thing is the time stamp and the date. And like Ben said, it's in the metadata. Got to get closer to that. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Um, okay. So it's in the metadata. Mm-hmm. So take pictures. And so why? Why are we taking these pictures? Because after the storm, A, I mean, in the worst case scenario, your home may not be there. So you need to prove what you had. Mm-hmm. So contents are a big deal. Uh, most policies have a contents section. You're talking about the contents of inside your house? Yes. Okay. And, and that goes for furniture and clothing and things like that. So that's one of the most left on the table piles of money ever in any insurance policy is the contents. Of the house. Of the house. Because people can't prove what they had? That's exactly right. So what they'll say, what the insurance company will say is, we'll happily take contents, prove what it was. Mm. That's pretty hard when you have six foot of water in your house and all that stuff's been swept well, out I with mean, the for other For me, nasty. I have so many antiques. There's no way I'd be able to get so rid of back. So, <laughs> Something so the, that you want people to do beforehand to kind of prepare. Yes. Yeah. yes, not just inside your house, but outside your house, too. So take take myriads of pictures. Mm-hmm. Is there someone who can, um, like, help guide what you would want to make sure you get covered? I don't know. So take yeah. a lot of pictures. Mm-hmm. So that's good. But I don't know. Like, I would be worried that there's something that I'm forgetting or not realizing or is included. Or what about, like, my mom and dad or somebody like the elderly? They would totally need somebody to come out and right. do that for them. Sure. So, so what, another thing that is Ken's saying about the pictures, you also want to take a, a notebook or a spreadsheet and also mark those items down. Because what the insurance company is going to do, and I have a client right now this happened to, he took all the pictures. So he sends the pictures in with contents. They're like, well, we need a, a, uh, you to write it all down. He writes it down. They send it back. Oh, no, you need to do it on this sheet. Oh, good <laughs> gracious. So. They're just trying to piss him off and get him to give up. So would an yeah. attorney be able to, like, kind of handle all that stuff for you? Yeah, attorney oh, can, but attorney's going to handle the whole claim. Yeah. So that, that's part of the claim. I just mean, like, that part. But, I mean, attorney's going to make it slow down, and then you're going to have to pay, like, what, um, 400 bucks an hour for him to do that? Nah. Unless it's with Bolt's Legal. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> <laughs> They're amazing. There, there are service. I mean, we'll, we offer a service that will come and do that for people. There's a fee, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, do that for commercial or residential um, that will come and take the pictures for them. So you'll, and, get, you'll and help. Uh, people get ready for a hurricane season. Exactly. That's a cool service. And when those pictures are taken, there are people in our industry that are forensic content specialists. So um, I, I know one uh, that, that lives up in the northern part of, of the United States that has the ability with simply with pictures to put a very accurate value on everything in the picture. Oh, wow. And uh, she actually has a, a unique ability that she can go into a fire job and with the help of the customer, uh, kind of like, uh, what do they call those artists, crime scene? Kind oh, of yeah, like, like sketch artists. Mm-hmm. Sketch artists. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like with the help of the customer, this person can put a value on everything in their home. And the insurance company will accept that's, that? That's kind of like Antique Roadshow. Sorry. It, it, it <laughs> is, actually. It is. And so, well, that's an interesting question. No, that they're never going to accept anything that you give them first. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's always going to be two or three, like, you know, like Paul was saying. But the pictures themselves are, are there, the evidence that you need. Mm-hmm. Should you need to go to a specialist, that's one thing. Um, that, and maybe you do. Um, when Michael, Hurricane Michael, hit Panama City, I jokingly said I chased hurricanes for 20 years and one chased me back. <laughs> <laughs> so, our home was uh, all but destroyed. Not only did we have the hurricane, but we had a tornado that came over our house. That happened a lot for Charlie when Charlie yes. came through. Oh goodness! It was such a sh- it was a small, tight yep, hurricane, and it spawned tornadoes. So I think the tornadoes actually did more damage than a lot you, than the hurricane itself. You oh, said yeah. you had a hurricane and a tornado come over your house. So we had Hurricane Michael uh, that hit Panama City area, and then it spawned uh, one of the, the tornadoes. Spawned tornadoes yeah. came and hovered over our house and. Uh, 
it was interesting in that it, it created a negative pressure in the sewer system and sewer began to foul. Oh, foul. Were you home? No. Yes, I was home. Were you in the closet? No, I was not. Uh, our house is a, is a block house. Okay. So it's pretty safe, block walls inside and out. But that didn't stop the nastiness from happening. That's so, so gross. <laughs> why did I tell that story? Um, <laughs> yes, it's good. It's good for the radio listeners. They're like, ew. Uh, so we had the the unique job to go through all of our possessions and to list them in a spreadsheet, which is what our insurance company insisted happen. Mm-hmm, also, mm-hmm. that's not easy to do. Um, mm. I had taken my own advice, and we did have pictures. Oh, good. that's good. But it's still not easy to do. Imagine how hard it is to do without pictures. Mm-hmm. No one's going to remember. Oh, no way. Wrong. And so the, 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 the idea is with a contents policy is to get paid for everything you lost. Absolutely. Well, it doesn't matter if you lost it and you can't prove it. They're not going to pay for it, and rightly mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. That's why it's important for people to document their homes. And the second reason that it's important is that sometimes we have storms back to back. And so let's say you have hurricane damage from Ian, and we're going to have another hurricane. And what if it hits? Well, if the work that's been performed on your home is either not done completely or done whatever the case is, and then that damage hits, the insurance company, if they don't have proof, they're rightly going to say, prove to me that that was done. Right. You need to have photo documentation of what's happening. And the, the, the consequences of not doing it are a lot worse than the consequences of taking an hour and going through your home with your cell phone. I'm, so, de- I'm gonna definitely going to do that. I mean, we've kind of done a couple things so far right now. Um, like we, I got my roof inspected right. and we had some stuff fixed on it. Do you recommend people like call plumbers and it just to do a whole house assessment before the storms come or is that too much? It's generally too much. Uh, okay. That would be a commercial project. I could right. see that happening on a commercial project and, uh, that's called pre-storm documentation. Generally for a home though, if you just do what we talked about and photo document everything, mm-hmm. And then, of course, if you've had repairs done, keep your receipts in order. And that okay. Sort of and how frequently would you say, I'm sorry, uh, would you say to take pictures like annually, maybe like after the hurricane season? Yes. Actually, I would I would suggest right before the hurricane season because that's going to be a closer time stamp to the event if oh, the event actually sense. happens. So the dead time between the pictures and when the event happens is the time in question. So right. you want to get it as close as possible. Gotcha. Right. And two things I would say is as soon as your repairs are done, take pictures. And then once hurricane season starts, you take and document, and you take all the, like Ken said, you take all the pictures on the outside, and then you take all the pictures on the inside. Um, If they paid you for ceiling damage, show that it's been done, paid for, or it's been painted, and, you know, you have a time stamp because the insurance company, again, could come, and we're dealing with this right now because of Irma. They're trying to say on some of the roofs that, oh, no, this was Irma damage. No. Even but it in, was Ian damage. It was Ian damage, right, but right. and a lot of people don't know this, but even in Naples, Naples Airport had 125 mile per hour winds. Not only did they get 10 feet of water in Naples, but if you call a claim in Naples, the insurance companies don't even want to hear about it. Right. Like, oh, that's that's. But you go to have that knowledge, and again, that's why you want to have somebody that knows it. But I wanted to touch base on another thing with water. Um, Ken hasn't touched base on this, and this is a huge thing that I get educated on: is a hurricane. When a hurricane comes. Hurricane water, and you get water inside your home, groundwater or roof water, that is considered Category 3 water. Ken, do you want to tell them what Category 3 water is? Sure. So uh, there are <laughs> I, don't, three, I don't want to know. There are three categories of water. It's not uh, good. I'll just one is drinking that. water. We'll call it potable, right? It's, mm-hmm. what, it's what your water. You're not going to die if you drink not it. Gonna, it's, it's good for you. Uh, number two is significantly contaminated, and that has biological elements. could be any, any number of nasty things. And number three is it's grossly contaminated and unhealthy for humans to either touch, breathe, and take in any way. All right. We want to talk about more about that because that was in my house. So you guys stay tuned because we're going to talk about Category 3 water uh, when we get back. And I know you're going to say something sarcastic. So go go ahead. Go ahead. Have at it. Frankly, she didn't leave me any time to say something (laughs) sarcastic. So we'll move along. I mean, there, we did two hours. I said, oh, that might be too much, but we could still talk for another two hours. Uh, mm-hmm. I told you, it does go fast. Mm-hmm. Right? Because it's just, what, it's like it flows, and then one thing leads to another. So we have 10 minutes left. Yeah. So that means that there's a couple of things that are really important to me, and one is that you guys get your contact information out. Um, so when we get closer to the end, I'm going to ask you to give all your contact information and if people want to contact you. Um, but then is there, what else is you guys, I I do want to talk about this category three water and one you're faced with it. What do you, what should you do? Like, 
Mm. My family walked through it, and we a lot of people lot of it out the window. You know what I mean? And we got like a pump suction to get oh, it, yeah. as much of it out. So the reason I brought this up is I learned this this year from Ken is that Category Three water is hurricane water. So Category Three water is if is so think about this: you have 150 mile per hour winds. It's raining. The wind's blowing. You have sewage. You have brackish water, and you have um, Sharknado. Yep. And, Ken, and Ken's going to talk says, about yep. it. But <laughs> Ken's those, like, what? <laughs> those are all the things that came through your ceiling or your groundwater, and people don't realize that, and that's how you get E. coli. And Ugh, all right. So think about E. coli in your ceiling. That's fun. Uh-huh. Really don't want to, but I suppose we can. <laughs> Again, final segment here. So uh, the music will start rolling up a minute before we One have to minute. end. Okay, just heads up. All right, stand by. Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. I want to give a huge thank you to our sponsor, Bolts Legal. Fear no storm with BoltsLegal.com. 33 Tanning Spa with locations in Altamont Springs and Longwood. Andrews Law PA, auto accident attorney. Contact Andrews Law PA today at AndrewsLawPA.com. And Crazy Muscle Nutrition with a new address is 1015 Unit 129 State Road 436 in Castleberry. So the, it's, they're up and running. Tom oh, yeah. went to visit the, the Crazy Muscle Nutrition, and he got some supplements. So we're super happy for Zach and his Yay. team, he's one of our sponsors, and so he was moving from Longwood to Castleberry. I was going to say, you said new address, so that sounds official. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, it's open, um, and I'm really happy for him. Um, like I said, it, it was it was an adventure, let's just say that much. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going into our last segment, and we are with Paul Clark, president of Storm Consulting, as well as the GM for Renegade Roofing, and Ken Sider, senior forensic analyst with environmental testing and assessment. Before we went to break, we were talking about Category 3 water, and I'm honestly scared. So <laughs> <laughs> it's toxic then, basically. So it's, it can be toxic. Mm-hmm. So a uh, category of water is talked about in, in a document called the IICRC S500. That's the Bible of wet buildings that's recognized by insurance companies and by remediation companies, and it's not just a, a United States document. It's worldwide. Mm-hmm. So it talks about what you should do if you have category one water, category two water, category three, how that's treated. And in your case, let's just take your case since we've talked about it. Um, you should have had it tested. Someone should have come in like our company that could tell you what you have. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it can tell you where you have what you have. And then thirdly, it writes a remediation protocol or a scope of work for getting back to pre-storm. But what actually happened is most likely is you had rising groundwater That groundwater is not, people think of that like a spring bubbling up out of the ground. That's not what that means. What that means is that polluvial flooding, which means flooding that doesn't necessarily come from a a giant water source, has infiltrated your home because your neighborhood's got wet. Yeah. And so um, you you live in a neighborhood. I live in a neighborhood. Your neighbors have dogs and cats, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dogs do their duty outside, and so does every other animal. Mm-hmm. And then when animals die, where do they go? And, oh, yeah. And so I'm not trying to pa- paint a gross picture, but I'm trying to paint a realistic one that when groundwater happens or the 150-some-mile-an-hour winds like Paul was talking about, these things are picked up and they become part of the water. Mm-hmm. Water is the universal solvent. When it comes in through the exterior envelope of your home, regardless of how that happens, from the top down, from the sides, from the bottom, that bacterial count and all those nasty bio loads come in with it. Um, there are people who have died from getting in that water who had a scratch on their leg. Oh, it's gosh, Angela. I know. You're close to death and so didn't even know I it. I know. It's f- actually, it's terrifying now <laughs> that I think about it because we do. We have a sunken living room, mm-hmm. and Winter Springs was already saturated because we had had so many storms. Uh, but like, like I said earlier, is that we got 22 inches of rain in 20 hours, mm-hmm. and it just was nonstop. And so when we woke up, woke up that next morning, we still had power, but water had filled up in our sunken living room and so but we walked in it mm-hmm. you know what i mean walked in it we made sure everything was unplugged we we yeah. took our we were taking our stuff out of it and that's me my husband my kids mm-hmm. and we were barefooted oh, and yeah. um and i had no idea and yeah. i'm so happy that and then my brother-in-law came over with my you know with his grandson and oh, you gosh. know he's in there splashing around oh, fun. <laughs> well, and i laugh now but i'm really kind of like 
Well, I'm, everybody's I'm, good and healthy, yeah. so that's good. But yeah, thank God. we know for next time. Well, one thing that you guys brought up is very important is after a storm, you have to be careful and you, you have to make sure you're using the correct PPE. But one of the things What's that happens. PPE? So Pro- protective. Oh. Personal protective equipment. Okay. So one of the things that happens after the storm is you'll see piles upon piles on the side of the road. That of, is of like shrubs. Or are you talking no, about I'm debris? talking about debris yeah, yeah. from inside the house. And this debris has E. coli. It has mold. It ah, has because of it all lot, the storm it's water. Not, yeah, right. it's not packaged properly, but people are trying to get it out. So it's all over. So you have to be careful. So one thing I wanted to touch base real quick on about the water situation was I went after the storm and volunteered for a church. And the church had some PPE, but they didn't have the correct PPE. And this happened the same week that we had like 10 cases of flesh-eating bacteria from oh. the hurricane that people got down in Fort Myers area. Oh <laughs> so we go into this this uh, mobile home. She lived on a, a boat ramp. And <laughs> we go in there, and I have the PPE. I, kn- I knew I, it was like a, a drywall mask, which is not a respirator. Mm-hmm. And un- our uh, cloth gloves that weren't cut-proof gloves. So we I go into this house, and the water was up to the your white sign there, at least 10 feet into this uh, in the above the house, so the house was raised. So the lady is, tr- the poor lady is trying to save all her stuff. And I said to her, I said, "You can't save this stuff. It's been, it's under flood water. It's no good. It's got bacteria. You can't save it." So while we're in there, because the church had gave us the wrong PPE, we we're starting to get headaches and sick mm. because of the mold and the stuff in there. So where I wanted to go with this real quick is when a hurricane hits. And churches and other businesses are sending out volunteers. They really need to call someone like a consultant or someone like Ken that can show them the correct PPE because they're inadvertently sending people out to help that are going to get sick. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't think anybody realizes that. No. And the go-to is always go out there, put on a a cheap paint mask, maybe Mm -hmm. some gloves, Mm -hmm. and start spraying chlorine like there's no tomorrow. Right. That is the wrong answer. It right. is. Yeah. Um, I know. That chlorine, sounds like something I would do. <laughs> chlorine is, generally chlorine in a bottle is water. It's sodium hypochlorite. So most of that's water. It's, and so what you're doing is you're introducing water back into the surfaces that you want to dry. Mm-hmm. And the interaction between chlorine, which is an oxidizer, and some of the mycotoxins in mold and the endotoxins and the exotoxins in bacteria can create new toxins. Mm -hmm. So it is a very bad idea. That should never happen. What about bleach? So that's what I mean when I say chlorine is bleach. Oh, okay. That's what I mean. Is it the same thing? It's the same thing. Is it the same thing? Yes, (laughs) ma'am. I I think chlorine is what you put in your pool. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But chlorine is like watered down bleach, essentially. (laughs) Right? Okay. We're girls, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. We're going in circles here. Not advancing. (laughs) if, If I could change gears a little bit, one of the other big problems is roofing. So a lot of people will come down and try to bring roofing down here and say, oh, we can use this roofing. No, it's not Miami-Dade proof. It doesn't have a stamp. So what I would re- highly recommend to people, especially roofers, if you don't know the industry, get consulted. Get to a consultant. Go to the your supply house. And the biggest thing is go to like SRS, which is Suncoast Roofing Supply down here. They're one of the top three, you know, roofing supply houses, they're going to sell you the correct stuff. Mm-hmm. So when you hear of a, a contractor coming down and, oh, yeah, I don't have no problems. I'm, you don't have to wait three months. I brought it from Michigan. Do not use those shingles. Mm. So that was another thing that I just wanted to touch base because every storm I see this happening. Mm-hmm. And then the inspectors come and say, oh, where's the Miami-Dade, the NOA? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And there's no NOA. Well, you got to rip that whole roof off. Oh, good Lord. And I've, had, <laughs> and I've had this happen in two different storms where I've had a customer have to call me and say, I don't have the money, and the contractor won't do it. So the contractor left because that contractor did 30 roofs from Michigan roof shingles, and now he doesn't have money to do it, and he leaves. So now that poor homeowner's stuck. Um, and so I've got to try to figure out ways to, you know, do the work. You know, sometimes we volunteer the labor, and then we go to the supply house or a shingle manufacturer to see if they'll, you know, give a discount on shingles. Right. But that's a big thing that people don't talk about here is you got to make sure that your um, all of your materials have an NOA and are Miami Date approved. So the theme of the story is is that you need to hire <laughs> storm <laughs> consultants, and I, I mean I I feel very strongly I want to help grow this because I think this is something that's hugely important. 
to everybody in the state of Florida and even outside of the state of Florida. So, Paul, give everybody your contact information. So my name's Paul Clark. You can get a hold of me. My cell phone is area code 239-380-1106. Our office is 239-470-0330. And you can go on and look us up at www.storm-consultants.com and www.renegaderoofingco.com. Awesome. Your turn. So my name's Ken Siders, and my contact information is cell phone 850-348-3429. That's 850-348-3429. And I can be reached at ken at g-o-e-t-a dot app, g-o-e-t-a dot app. All right, go fast. All right, and mine is uh, Melissa at Striking Brand strikingbrand.com and i am angela at badradio.com thank you so much for joining us and uh, join us next week for we're going to talk more probably about storms so <laughs> have a great week everybody Woo, that sounds Woo. exciting join us again as she said 11 o'clock sunday morning to 1 p.m i am melissa fox and thank you all for joining us for bad radio